It's a full frame off car. Started from the ground up. I started with the frame, reinforced it to handle the abuse of hydraulics. And then eventually I got the body of the car and I had it sandblasted, but the car was totaled. The guy destroyed every panel on the car. So within the past year or so, I've been repairing all the original body panels that I could save, dashboard, fenders, trunk, but I had to replace the back half of the car by cutting it off and then welding it back on. Me being an amateur, it's a learning process, so it's not like I know exactly what to do. This whole thing I've been doing is the first time I've done any of this. And I'm happy with how it's coming out, but it's been about three times as long as I expected it to be, but that's part of the game, you know? So when the car was sandblasted, my intentions were to just get all the old paint off of it, all the mystery stuff, because you want to start with a fresh, clean slate. Go figure, the guy totaled the whole car. Every panel was sunk in. All the body lines were gone. All the doors were sunk in about an eighth inch. The dashboard was sunk in. So I've spent a lot of time pulling all this stuff out, reworking the metal to get it straight and body working it. And when it had happened was a year of COVID, so you know, money's tight and everything. I had to save what I had and what I could and do with the best of what I had, you know what I mean? That's been the long process of it. It, this car should have been done a year ago, but it's all good. You know, now everything's brand new. So with the back half, I was not able to salvage these panels. So I had to cut them off the car. And then start fresh by putting these on the back. It's a big job, but it's rewarding seeing it come together little by little. But it takes a lot of hours just to get a little bit of progress done at a time. So with the undercarriage of most low riders, you want to do some sort of reinforcement to them to handle the abuse that the car may take, whether it's hopping, three-wheeling, whatever. You have to start with the frame of the car. So when I first started this project seven years ago or so, pulled the body off the frame and you wrap the whole frame in metal plate like I got against that wall right there. You cut it up piece by piece and then wrap the frame with it, make it look as good as you can so it can handle the abuse the car is gonna take later on. Whether it's hopping or three-wheeling, just having fun. So with the trunk lid, for example, the trunk lid was destroyed. I got another one, that one was okay. So I cut the trunk in half and then I had to make one trunk out of two from here to here. And I've been making this trunk fit the car and the new panels in the back. So a lot of the stuff on the car is made for the car. It may not fit another car, it's made for this one right now at this point in time. So this is just a mock-up. You can see the frame is coming through the floor of the car. And this is just basically how the pumps are gonna be positioned. The batteries will be here, four here, four here, four here. The way this works is, the way this particular setup is, this is for your front pump, for front wheels, and this is your back passenger, back driver side. Everybody's setup's a little bit different. So for something like that, you gotta have a lot of batteries. And in this car, we're putting 12 in there. She's coming to party. So why, why all the pumps and why all the batteries? So the more batteries you have, the more violent the car is gonna be, the more snappy the car is gonna be. Some low riders, if you just wanna cruise, lay and play, you may only need four batteries or so, two pumps. The more radical you wanna get with it, the more batteries you need, the more framework you need. So I do like to hop, I like to give it up, I like to put on a show when I pull up. So I've been building this car for that reason, to have fun with it, enjoy it. So this engine I built with my stepfather a few years back for a race car that I had. It was an 81 Monte Carlo. This little street car, something that fun with when I was a kid. Car rusted away, kept the engine. Now it's got fuel injection in it, air conditioning, serpentine system, long tube headers. It should get out of its own way pretty good and pull its weight. It's not gonna be going fast, but it'll roll good. So I shaved the whole firewall with one eighth inch plate steel. Added some billet accessories to clean up the wiring, keep everything nice and neat and tidy. The competition necessarily, it's, it's rising. The bar is getting higher and higher every year. So I really did take a lot of time to get this as flat and straight as I could within my means to make it look good. It will be color matched. 
So the same thing as the car, the frame will be painted the same color as the car. I'm doing the best I can to make it really, really shine at every angle, you know what I mean? I wanna be able to pull up with no hood if I want to and just let everything look good. It's a lot of work. You want it to look good at the end of the day, you know? So with the stupid trunk, with all that challenging, come to find out the trunk was actually defective. In the 60s, nothing was perfect. Nothing's perfect now. So this trunk happened to be about an eighth inch too long. So right when I thought it was done, I had to figure out how to make it shorter to bring it in the car so it wasn't sticking out the back. So a few days ago, I just had to cut an eighth inch off of it, weld it back up, and I'm doing my best to get the contour to match the car. I mean, with the technology they had back then, it was okay back then, but now we're trying to make these cars show cars and make them a little bit nicer. If you want to take it there, you can take it there, but it just takes work. So with the frame of the car, that was like the first step that I took with this project. And that was probably one of the most difficult, especially just jumping into it. I had no idea what I was doing. Never done a frame off. Just did basic stuff prior to that, wheels and tires and lights on a car, stickers, you know, the basic fun stuff, which is cool. But I, this has my, been my dream car since I was a kid. You finally had it, you're gonna do it the best you can. So at the time I had an apartment, it was a one car garage with no power. I was working 12 hours a day. I'd get out of work, I'd go to my mother's house, work on the frame for a few hours sleep three hours, go back to work, and it took me about six months to do the frame that way. And it came out good, but it was very demanding at the time, especially just jumping into it. I had no idea how to weld. I had to teach myself how to weld as best as I could on the internet and like advice from friends, pictures over text messages. This look good? No. This look good? Okay, yes, keep going. You know, that's, that's what it started out as. And uh, it's been a journey since then. You know, when I started, I had no idea that it would take off or take this much work to complete, but that's part of what makes it special at the end of the day when you get closer and closer, seeing all your work start to come together and you start to see that white light at the end of the tunnel.